you were there, sitting on that rock-hard park bench, on that wonderfully warm spring evening, you could smell that freshly cut grass, and you could just about hear those flowers popping out into full bloom. You would have seen me, a 35-year-old guy, and that was before I started coloring my hair, <laughs> and my buddy, a gentleman exactly twice my age. And for you, Matt Major, that's 70. You see, I had one question for him. Dad, what's the one thing in life that you always wanted and you've never been able to have? You've gone through so many things, you've seen so many things, you've experienced so many things, but yet there's got to be at least one thing that you've always wished for. What is it? You know, I want a bicycle. Never had a bicycle. Don't even know how to ride a bicycle. But I want a bicycle. All the things in the world. This is what the old man wants? A bicycle? I mean, you could knock me over with a feather. Now, come on. This is going to be easy. I'm just going to run down to the toy store. I'm going to slap some plastic on the counter. They're going to deliver the bike and voila. Dream maker. Joe Man's dream is going to come true. This is going to be easy. So, uh, not so fast. Can you see the headline? 70 year old man pushed face first into a tree, learning to ride a bike. Talk about an inauspicious start. I mean, I can't do this. Am I going to have my dad sign up? Oh, I don't know. A damage waiver? I'm his son. Can you see the investigator? Oh my goodness, how did this happen? Wait a minute. Talk about motivation. Maybe something about their inheritance, hmm? <laughs> oh, I thought about it. This dream is just going to have to die. Pick another one, Dad. This one isn't going to work. No. That's why, on the very next Saturday, there we were on the sidewalk in front of his house, with a beautiful, bright red bicycle. A Schwinn. I'm sure you've seen it. It's got the chrome on the front, the chrome on the back. It's got a basket. It's got the horn. It's got everything you'd want. The back tires. I had all I could do to stop from putting the baseball cards in this boat. Remember when we did that? I mean, Pee Wee Herman would have been proud of this thing. It was great. We were ready to go. He was going to fulfill that dream. Mounted up, Dad. Stepped over and there he sat. And I took one hand and put it under the seat and put the other one on the front handlebar. And we were good to go. And we started down that sidewalk. And we went faster. And we went faster. And we went faster until finally, wham! One giant push, and he was off. Well, kind of. Wobble, wobble. Pump harder, that pump. Oh my God, I said that in public, didn't I? Look at him. Look at him. I got it. I think he's got it. There he goes. And you talk about courage. Can you imagine just for a second a 70-year-old man trying to learn how to ride a bike? But that's nothing. You see, that's why he's part of America's greatest generation. Of all the things he's gone through, that's courage. I mean, come on. Here's a guy that survived tuberculosis, cancer, a disabled war veteran. Heck, he even survived raising me. House full of kids. 
Man, this is no challenge at all. I mean, he was born to a family of 13 kids during the Depression. I submit, with 13 kids, it's always a Depression. He was tucked in single beds with three or four of his siblings. Wow, courage. Now, this is a guy. I mean, come on. We've been, wow, we've been talking about him off the lawn. I wonder where he is. There he is, look at him. And doesn't he look cute? He's got that bright pink helmet that I bought him. <laughs> I can tell he's going pretty fast. I mean, those streamers I put in the handlebars are sticking straight out. Hit the brakes, Dad, son, hit the... Oh, my God. We never even talked about the brakes. I never thought we'd need them today. Don't worry. Don't worry, Dad. I'll catch you. I'll catch you. You come right in here. I'll catch you. This is going to be tougher than lasso and steer. I'm going to have to grab them and slow them down. But let me tell you something. Shouldn't it be difficult to put the brakes in an old man's dream? Well, I can't talk. I got to get ready. Here he is. Here he comes. Wow. I got him. Whew. How was it, Dad? Just hold on a second. You see, because this is the difference between his generation and mine. His generation, the courageous ones, they just did what they were supposed to do. They didn't make a big deal about it. How many times have you heard your folks saying, you just did what you needed to do? Not my generation. We kind of stood around a lot of times and we looked for credit. I made a dream come true. Wow, I can't believe how happy he's going to be with me. I can't wait until he pats me on the back. Well, Dad, how'd it go? He looked at me. He had his glasses on. A gap between his teeth. That pink helmet looked kind of ridiculous, but he had a smile from ear to ear. He said, great, son, great. And I saw some kids out there, he said, that had a skateboard. You don't have one of those, man! Oh my gosh. This old man, once again, he just knocked me over with a feather. Anything that you're saying to us. But 
Overall, I thought your speech was outstanding. I hope to hear you speak again soon, and thank you for being our guest tonight. Thank you.
a son talking about his father and the love for his father and the fact that he's 70 years old. And, you know, and I was thinking, wow, he waited to 70 years old? And then when you brought us back into the story in terms of the hook to it, and you started talking about all the things your father had done, all the wonderful things and all the experiences he had. My God, he's a family with 13 kids. To me, that's monumental in itself. And can you imagine coming from a family of 13 kids? And my father, you know, did this and this and this and all the things that he did. And I think from, from a connected, in terms of connecting with your audience, again, with the bicycle, when you're describing that, I think, again, even putting more emotion on that, just your expressions. Wow, I can't believe that. He's actually, he's actually, he's actually riding the bike. And kind of almost follow him. And Valerie mentioned going down the middle. I definitely, if there were an aisle, I would take it down the middle as well. Courage. I like the idea that you brought in courage. You had some really good hook catchphrases to it. When, when I know Craig talked about foundational phrases, you used several of those when you, you were talking about in the beginning. Not going with a feather, but you described very vividly about, you know, can we all kind of visualize spokes in a wheel, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, cards in the spokes, rather. And then you're talking about, I think your line was tougher than a steer, or something to that effect. So you had several catchphrases in there that made me think, and I loved your vivid description in terms of connecting us and describing physically what your father looked like with the pink helmet and all of that. And then you also called back to it later on and described him again. And then I did like your callback about knock me over with a feather. And I know that's a good callback to take it back to the opening of your speech. But overall, I really enjoyed it. I think you could have made more effective use of your pauses to convey that emotion to us as an audience. Because you're pacing in some parts, you're really, you're really going through it pretty quick. So I think you just need to slow your pacing down a little bit more so you can engage us even more. But I really thoroughly enjoyed the speech. And I also hope that I'll have an opportunity to, to hear you speak again. So thank you thank for sharing you. that. I appreciate it.
when he started with the chicken or Bill Bowerman, who was the, one of the partners with Nike. He was 58 when that company started. Age doesn't make a difference. And that's an inspirational thing to everyone, is if you have a goal or a dream, you can start it at any time. And that's one of the uh, great takeaways that I'll take from the speech. Thank you for letting us listen. I appreciate it. Thank you. I have one. I would simply like to expand on a point that Bob made about the telling of the story. I had that same sense that, uh, that it was more stagey than felt. And the, the lesson that I've always heard on this is that if you can somehow re- experience, the original experience, while you're talking, then the emotions will not only be real, but of course they will appear real. I, I, I agree, and I agree. That's what separates the pros from that, but, and, and, I, and that's the difficulty that I need to learn, speak for myself. You hit it on, on, on the mark. I saw the bike again Monday. He's 92, it's on blocks. Damn bike is still there. Right? He's still riding it every day. Now I looked at it before I left today as I was putting the speech together. Yeah. So I don't, to be candid with you, I don't know what, it's almost like you can touch it, right, the motivational, but I don't know how you can make yourself feel that emotion if you can't, you find yourself in a day like I am today where you can't feel that emotion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's what I agree with you 100 percent in saying, yeah, it, you, right. You you should feel it, but you know, I touched it. Maybe I visualized it. I, I I watched him ride it today. I did. I don't know what else I could have done to feel it. Some days, you know, and again, that's what separates the pros from from me. All right, and that is, hell, I don't know how to make myself feel this right at this moment on demand. Right, I've I've had it right there. I mean, right. So yes, you're you're right on the money, and I guess that's the thing where you you just hold maybe. <coughs> easier to tell to to frame the, the the speech in terms of today's experience start there start with seeing and touching the bike today it might be easier to connect with those feelings than the ones from 30 years ago 20 years ago Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a lot of times. Say, yeah. Let me tell you. This morning, before I left home, I had a quick visit with my dad. And here's what we did. I went into the garage and I helped him bring his bicycle out so that he could take a ride. And as he was riding, I was thinking back to the first time I ever saw him ride. So what you're saying is, is the first person you have to engage is yourself. Yeah. Yeah, you really do. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes... And it's not easy. Right, it's right. Not easy. Absolutely. Some days you just don't... You're, you know, right. today I'm but, I, but I think if you... It, it, the possibly starting from a place that's much more immediate makes it easier to tap into... That's what I was searching for. That's what I was trying to grab. And, and, and as you know, because you're experienced, sometimes you get up there... And it just comes. Yeah. Okay. Trust and then the more times you get up there, the more often it comes. Sometimes, what do you do when it don't come? It's not right. And then you're trying to. Yeah. And then the next step beyond that is to retell the same story authentically again and again and again. Because so many of the best speakers <coughs> have that signature story mm -hmm. that they tell almost every time because it is. It makes an essential point about who they are and what their message is. But, but even if it's your essential point, there's got to be a day or two where your essential point is, is flat to you. You can't always dig it out of your soul. But yes, your point is very well taken, I, and I experienced that tonight. So, you yeah. and every other creative actor in the world. Yeah, well, that's, that's right. You know. So, but thank you. Yeah, I, 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 like, I like the approach that John suggested, too. I think starting now and the way you feel just going out in the garage seeing that bike up in the blocks and 
how that brought back those memories when he first wrote it. I think and then working backwards to it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that from an emotional standpoint that might, you know, because sometimes when we reflect back on, and I know sometimes when you, know, you catch yourself at the oddest moment thinks about thinking about certain things, and you're there. Right. You're, you're, you're right there. Right. It just, you don't think about it, it just, you know. It but just, it, it, it's interesting with all the training that we have, it, it, it always says, well, you got to bring your audience into that moment. Sure. If I can get in that moment, I can bring you. If I can't get in that moment, right. you ain't going. That's hard. Right. 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 See, and that's where I do it. That's how I say you're just talking at us. Right, right. And that's, I agree with you. Yeah. Yes, because I, I can't get in the moment that for whatever reason. And I was looking for that hook where I could get emotionally on it because I knew once I got on it, I know I could get you to come and you to come and you to come and you to come. So that's a good exercise. Interesting. That's, yeah. Thank you. I want to say that, you know, you did a really good job with, with the whole, you know, showing us what you're telling us. Because I actually was forcing myself to look at you. Because I wanted to look at you bad, <laughs> really bad. I wanted to, because you were pointing to him, so I right. wanted to look that way. So I that's because that's where I saw him. Yeah. Yeah, so I had a hard time just, no, I'm not turning. I'm not turning. Right, right. So you did a really good job with that. But I, but maybe it was, I think that was a good point, is to have it here or maybe even on an angle. Yep. And have your path yep. there instead of completely sideways. Right. You need to block your audience. And then one other thing I wanted to add is that you were looking down at your dad because he was on the bike, and you were talking to him, and then he was talking to you, and you were still in the same position. Yep. So. Right. You know, then get his get, maybe get into his body. Or and, pivot. And then right. look up like you're talking. Right. And you did a really good job of setting us up with positioning in the first conversation about him wanting a bike because mm -hmm. you moved back and forth right so that we could tell easily who was speaking right right so it was a little jarring when that same skill didn't show up again the second in the second conversation yeah. that's and that's and that's what was when I was looking for the emotion and I'm lucky if I can think of one thing out of the time. <laughs> but yeah, they, that, that was a good dissection. Yeah. Any comments from that? Great three speeches. Yes. I love them all.